We all want decent life out of the components of our mountain bikes. And yes, it does depend on where and how you ride and your maintenance schedule, but I think it's true to say that most drivetrains certainly aren't up to the task of a modern e-mountain bike. And I think that's more on the shifting side rather than the durability. However, there is an alternative. Shimano Link Light, on the other hand, is all about durability and smooth shifting. It is actually made for an e-mountain bike, which is why I've mounted it to my Specialized Levo, which is frequently involved in high chain tension situations and a maintenance regime which is, let's say, less than perfect. Most Shimano derailers and cassettes come with the Hyperglide design. Now, Hyperglide was designed in the 1980s. It's all about speed of shifting and light weight, whereas the Link Glide, as I mentioned, is all about durability and heavy duty daily use. So how do they actually get that increased performance and durability of a Hyperglide? The redesigned teeth on this cassette have a much thicker base and a unique chamfer that drastically improves wear resistance in high torque applications. The robust cassette teeth really do resist damage when shifting and climbing under high torque situations such as this. And because of the redesign of the shifting gate, it creates a smoother handoff between the cogs to avoid jumps that can affect the smoothness. This means it's more pronounced on outward shifts where pedal shock is more noticeable due to the higher forces. So what parts do you guys need to replace in order to tap into this tech? Well, it's pretty simple. You've got the cassette, the derailleur, the chain, and the shifter. Now, Link Glide comes in either 11-speed XT or 10-speed Dior. You've also got the mighty electronic DI2, but that's a story for a bit later. So climbing, shift, wheelie, clear the roots and keep on going. The link light that I have on the Spech is XT version, that's 11 speed, 1050 on the back, weighs in at 780 grams, it's gonna cost you around about 100 pounds. Now, if you put that in comparison to the standard Hyperglide, now this is an XT, 1052 in the back, uh, this is gonna uh, cost you a lot more, around about 160 pounds, but remember, it's actually, well, Shimano say, up to three times less durable than the link light. For 10 speed Dior, there's an 1143 tooth cassette set with a weight of 634 grams, but the 11, 13 and 15 teeth, which typically wear out faster than the larger cogs, are replaceable. You might actually be worrying about the weight of these components, but I don't think there's actually any need to on an e-mountain bike. And let's face it, the tires and the wheels will play a part in the story as well. Now, if you think about it, a lightweight tire will weigh in about 800 grams, whereas a heavy duty, heavy sidewall tire, about 1.3 kilos. So there's an 800 gram difference just in wheels and tires alone. Derailleur, we've got uh, XT 11 speed on this bike. It also comes in the Dior 10 speed. Plus of course, that mighty electronic DI2, which features the auto shift and the free shift technology. But for that to work, you'll actually need to be tuned in to the Shimano EP8 and EP6 motors, which are coming out next year, for the cassette and the derailleur to communicate with that motor to open up those very cool new features. It's important to understand that the standard link light system can be fitted to any EMTB, not just bikes with Shimano motors. However, to get the full benefit of the DI2 version and corresponding app, you'll need the motor too, such as the very popular EP8. The auto shift technology is super exciting and with the manual override, uses an advanced shifting algorithm to continually analyze data from multiple sensors. Now this automatically puts you in the optimal gear without any manual shifting up front. Free shift, on the other hand, allows you to select the optimal gear while coasting into switchbacks or dynamic terrain changes. So you're always ready to change with better balance and control. Well, I really feel like I'm bombarding you with components, 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 and 
Inasmuch as the Link Glide is a relatively inexpensive drivetrain, it is equally important to invest in some good riding technique. And what I mean by that is such things as shifting under load in high torque technical climbing situations. What you need to do is you need to anticipate, prepare for the climb and shift before tackling it. Um, other situations could be you giving your mate a go on your e-bike, never ridden one before, and because it's, it's got assistance, you can actually ride in a higher gear. They'll grab a load of gears, they go up to the cassette, and that will do the cassette no good at all. Right, so bad technique, you come down the climb, you're way too far down the block, in too high a gear. Ugh, try to grab all those gears, not good. Okay, so the right way is anticipate, change up the gear, spin out so it's easy for you and your cassette. And finally, one important technique is to wash, dry, lube and chain check your drivetrain on a regular basis. Hope we've shown that it shouldn't cost a fortune to keep your e-mounted bike running.